Hi, Al here uh, again with uh, now a, a quick update on the new features that are available in version 1.0 beta. Uh, not available on the Chrome Web Store yet, but uh, hopefully coming soon. I'd like to uh, get a few people to, uh, to take a look at it and maybe uh, find some things that I've missed because there's some fairly significant changes in particular under the cover that allow me to um, you know, position me better to, uh, to add new functionality as we move forward. So quick reminder on the extension tab, which of course you can get to by clicking this little puzzle piece here, but I'm on the extension tab right now. I'm looking right now at version 1.0.0. It is enab enabled and then down a little bit, I've got my version 0 0.9.1, which would have been, which would have come from the Chrome web store. That one has been disabled. The two of them can't run simultaneously. It, uh, it messes things up, so please don't do that. If you do get a messed up display, it's probably because both of them are, uh, are running at the same time. So the, the dialogue itself is largely the same. We still have the drop down menu in the top left corner. I can add my class list to the, uh, to the, um, to the drop down menu. Click the, the icon to save it. My class has been saved. Now the area down below, um, you can either add the names to this class by starting a meet, or if you click on the class edit button, this new button up here, um, that allows you to open up and son of a gun there, we've got the text field that we, we had before. And so as before, you can cut, copy, paste names, uh, type names in here. So A, B, C, D, there are my four students that I have in this particular class. I tab out of the field, and now the, I've added buttons for them. And the reason I've added these buttons is it allows me to go. So they're pink right now, indicating that they're they're absent. Um, but I can colorize each of the buttons, so you can see each of the students a little bit more visually whether whether or not they're actually in the meets and uh, and whether they've joined or whether they're new. Um, it will also give me an awful lot more functionality. Uh, potential for functionality in terms of being able to add uh, hover text and, and those sorts of things. You can also click on these buttons. And when you do that, it gives you three fields that can be edited. There's the login name, and that's the name which they use to log in or connect to your Meet window. So that's the, that's the, uh, the text that, um, that arrives by default, shows up on your screen when, when the kids join your Meet. That is information that is dictated by the settings in your, uh, your G Suite configuration. And so your, uh, your IT wonks at the, uh, at the office or your school, uh, school district or who, whoever is configuring um, uh, Google Meet settings, they're the ones who can control what really appears in this particular field. If you don't like what appears in that particular field, you can change it now. Now you've actually been able to do this for some time since version 7.10, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but, uh, but this gives you a, a much better, I guess, interface, shall we say, to, to tweak those values. So rather than having the person just arrive as A, I'm gonna display, um, add their, make, change that to um, Al C, and then I can add an email address for them as well. A number of people have asked for the ability to add the email addresses. So yes, you can input an email address. These are things that you will have to enter yourself. So if you want to change the way that the names are displayed, you'll have to add a, a display value. If you want to add an email address, you're going to have to cut and paste that in. I do not, do not have the permissions within the extension that allow me to, um, to extract those values from, from elsewhere in Google. Um, I deliberately, very deliberately kept the, um, the permissions on the extension to an absolute minimum so that, uh, so that there are fewer concerns about uh, me having access to uh, personal information and student names and, and that sort of thing. And I, I reiterate strongly here, I never have that information. It's saved in all of your class lists, your student names, your email addresses, if you add them, will be saved within your Google profile. Um, it never comes to me. I do not see that information. So I've tweaked this particular entry click and now notice that it displays as I'll see. And if I come back, there it is again. If I click on the edit field button now, notice that 
there are now basically three entries in here, three sections of text. First is the display name. Second, inside round brackets, is the login name, the person, how their, how their name appears by default in your neat window. And then last but not least is the email address. Now, you can go on and you can do the same sort of thing that I've done here it, directly in this particular field. So this is a fully editable field and it will tie back and forth um, um, just like it did before. But, um, but the, uh, um, by changing it to the buttons, it just makes it, a, I think, a little bit of a tidier interface for, um, um, for entering things. Um, may need a little bit of up, update and improvement, but that's why we're running the beta, so I can get, uh, get that sort of feedback from you. Um, another big area where there's some changes is on the settings tab. So I've kind of laid things out a little bit differently here. And I've changed it now so that the uh, you can set things up so that the you can specify a, an interval between attendance checks. So it can be as frequently as every 10 seconds, every 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, five minutes. The um, and I've been I've been testing it and I and actually I've I've I like the every 10 seconds because that way you get uh, you don't miss the the transient when the kids who appear for a brief moment and then disappear and unless you're unless you're watching. And unless they happen to be on the screen at just the moment when the uh, extension is checking attention, makes it a little bit uh, tougher to catch them. So I like the every 10 seconds. The problem with uh, doing things as every five minutes, I put it in, I don't know that anyone will want it. Um, if a kid shows up for a minute or two and then disappears, you'll, you'll miss them. So I, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, I've added a new option here in terms of the, um, the reports that you can automatically, so you can generate both reports, or if you're never going to use the HTML, or so the CSV report, well then why not just generate the HTML so that you don't have the, the CSV files polluting your, uh, your downloads directory. Or if you're never using the HTML, well then you can just create the uh, CSV files. Um, both. You can auto save the files or not. And so yes, I would recommend, and that is the default setting, that as soon as you click the, the red phone icon to, uh, to uh, end your meet, or if you reload the page, or if you exit the page, the, uh, the files will be automatically saved to your uh, downloads directory. Uh, the other entries here are all the same. I've added a few more advanced options that hopefully you won't have to use. Um, and yeah, I won't get into the end of the coverage here. If you, have, if you wanna find out more about uh, what's going on with that, I'd be more than happy to have a conversation at another time. But basically there are the sort of the, the, new, um, the new bits, um, in particular this, when you go in, when you join the meet, um, everything will work as before. Um, when a student arrives at the meet, they will get the check mark beside their, beside their name. Um, they will be changed instead of having this sort of uh, dusty pink background. It will change to a green background to indicate that, uh, that they have joined. Um, there is um, a yellow background if there is someone new and they have that question mark prepended to the name as well. If someone joins the meet uh, somewhat unexpectedly. But otherwise, um, I think that's everything I need to tell you right now. The, I guess if you are doing this for the beta, I suspect that your class list will be empty um, because the, um, the extension, this is a new extension. It's not, it's running as a, with a different ID, et cetera. So if you look at the, uh, on the extensions tab here, this ID is gonna be different from the, or sorry, this ID here for the 0.9.1 is different from the ID here. And so those, the, your class lists and that information is stored separately. So don't be too, too um, concerned or afraid that, uh, that everything is gone. It's, it's still there in the other extension. And, uh, and uh, you know, so it's a bit of a, a bugger that you're gonna have to, to re-enter some things. As I did mention in the Facebook post, if you create a backup of the, um, of your, um, sorry, not that tab. If you create a backup of your class lists, before disabling version 0.9.1, then you'll have all of that information in a text file so you can copy and paste it into, uh, into the edit field. And that way you'll have your, your class lists and, and names back without having to 
to manually re-enter them. Um, I look forward to your feedback. Let me know how it goes. Uh, I've been particularly interested to see whether or not the, um, the first person into the meet actually gets marked present now. Uh, I, as I said, it's, it's a, uh, as I've said in Facebook, many, or sorry, I guess rewind a little bit. Many people have said that, or have noticed this, that the first person into a meet doesn't get marked present. Uh, I haven't been able to replicate it, and I don't know that it's because of something in our, our setting, or maybe it was something that I changed in, in the code in my version, and so I was catching it. So I'm, I'm very keen to see whether or not your first, uh, first pupils arrive, as, as expected. Um, feedback, feedback, feedback. Let me know how it goes. Thanks. Bye.